that. Mm. It's it, there's no one solution fits everybody. Right. No recipe book you can follow. Right. Uh, creativity, discernment of what what your community needs mm -hmm. and how you can best serve your community. Mm -hmm. um, we've also talked about some mid-size or formerly large churches. Mm -hmm. um, we're sitting at what started as a Snowbirds seasonal church mm -hmm. and is essentially a deliberately small church, mm -hmm. at least in terms of average Sunday attendance. Um, but I believe you believe that there is a place for such a, a deliberately small church. There's, there's a place for every kind of congregation or parish. Uh, if you have one that's in an urban area that still has a sizable number of people who form that community, thank God for that. Uh, it's a wonderful resource. But even if you're in a place where once there was a larger congregation as here, but now a smaller one, uh, demonstrably smaller, uh, doesn't mean that you still don't have a vocation. Uh, recently, when our rector, who had been here for 12 years, much beloved, Laura Brecht, retired and relocated, um, one of the things we did is publish an article in the local paper, and I got together material to help the writer of that article. And one of the things I think that I was told by someone who was a leader in providing services to those in need in the community, uh, Martha Deichler, she said to me, you know, uh, that Laura was the pastor of Borrego, N not just the pastor of St. Barnabas, but of Borrego uh, in general. And I said, yes, Martha, I told you that because I heard it from the Catholic priest at an ecumenical sunrise service at Easter a couple okay. of years ago. Um, let me interrupt you. Um, you can have a small parish that is deliberately small or historically small, yet it's still vital and can still be a major contributor to the community. Um, but to some extent, it requires the congregation to step up. Right, well, I was getting to that. Uh, Martha said to me, do you know that you have more leaders of the Borrego Valley community in your congregation, small as it is, than any other parish? And we have six of them here in a very small town. And I said, I am aware of that. And sometimes it's not even obvious. There are some that are quite explicit, but there are people who do all kinds of work that nobody notices. They're, as I said in one of my books, saints of hidden holiness. Uh, they bring food to people who are shut in. They try to connect those who need work with jobs. Uh, one of them even has taken in a homeless uh, young person and given that person a place to get back onto his feet. Uh, and nobody, nobody trumpets this. It's not in the paper. It's not even in our, our monthly newsletter, but it goes on. So that kind of leadership can be not just here, but, but anywhere, as long as people want to live out the gospel. And it, it seems to me that one of the things that makes it work is that the people who are doing the good works aren't worried about who's getting credit for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of the good work that gets done by the people here gets done through Borrego Ministers Association mm -hmm. because by ourselves, we're not big enough to get it done. That's right. But by involving the whole community, we can get things done and um, we serve God without worrying about p what label or brand label we're putting on it. Right. The BMA, the Borrego Ministers Association, is really a clearinghouse. Uh, a clearinghouse, importantly, because uh, individual cases that are in need can be brought through the members of it, the lay as well as clergy members. And then all of the contributions, uh, all of the grants uh, that we've uh, gotten through uh, outfits in the community and individuals can then be directed to things like uh, helping people with rents. This is especially important in the pandemic. Uh, utilities, food, uh, certificates. Two, the two stores here in town, grocery stores, uh, provide between the two of them almost a hundred thousand dollars worth of, of uh, uh, gift certificates every year. So this is the gospel in action and here it's really uh, a foretaste of the feast to come in that it's completely ecumenical. There are Methodists, there are Lutheran, Catholic, uh, Episcopal, uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, laity and clergy involved. Okay.